So what, what is the plan here with your, what's your election strategy here? Um, I'm a non-party peer these days. I am just trying to stop the Tories and UKIP uh, forming a majority. So I have uh, donated equal amounts of money in total to 15 Liberal Democrat candidates and 30 Labour candidates in marginal seats. Um, I was in Southport last night for uh, my friend uh, John Pugh with my Lib Dem badge on uh, and I'm here this morning helping Will Straw in Rossendale uh, which is a knife edge Labour Tory marginal. And, and how important is that stopping the Conservatives? So, so it's, not, it's not about supporting one party or another? No, I am strictly non-party. I call myself a non-party social democrat these days. Uh, I am just anti-Tory and anti-UKIP and in our rotten first-past-the-post political system you have to focus on key seats. Now I've analysed the Labour Tory marginals very carefully uh, and I've sat supported 30 Labour candidates who I think are likely to be having very close results on a range of likely outcomes. At the last election the Conservatives won 11 seats, Labour 7 and the Liberal Democrats 4 by margins of under 1%. Now under 1% I think is uh, an area where uh, a good donation early on, which I tried to do to help level the playing field against the Tories and support and help and a bit of guidance as far as I can, particularly to new candidates, uh, I think could make the difference. So I tried to pick those seats where it could make a difference. And I'm pleased to say on the evidence of the polls and the bookmakers so far, it feels as if it's coming out right. Here in Rossendale, uh, a poll came out uh, a few days ago showing Will Straw in a dead heat with the Conservatives. So nothing is more important here than giving him that extra bit of help to get over the line. But this seat is one of those that you know, the Conservatives have been in for five years. How much does an incumbency, do you think, skew the calculations? I think uh, I did look at incumbency. Uh, when I was deciding which seats to pick, uh, which probably needed a higher swing to Labour than the average, uh, I did look at incumbency. And in some cases where a Tory MP was standing down, like, say, in Cannock, for example, where Janos and Jot, Rot, Toth, I think Janos Toth has a good chance of beating UKIP and the Tories, that helped. Here, I backed it because I've known Will Straw since he was a baby. His kids went to school with us. I've known him for many years. He was a civil servant of the Treasury when I was a Lib Dem Treasury spokesman. And he kindly said afterwards that ducking my questions was one of the hardest uh, jobs he had. So I've known him for a long time and I know that I knew that he would use any help I gave him really wisely. So although on paper this looked quite a tough ask, uh, I felt this was worth investing in Will. Uh, also I thought for particular reasons uh, of expenses and other problems, I thought the swing here was rather higher than one might have expected last time, so I think there's a bit of a catch-up to come. So for all those reasons, I felt the other seats, again with big Tory majorities or pretty big Tory majorities like this that I backed, have particularly been where UKIP were active. Uh, for example, in, uh, in South Thanet, uh, particularly in, in Great Yarmouth uh, and in Dudley South, uh, those are seats I think that Labour can win even though quite a high swing is required because it'll be a three-way race with the Tories and UKIP. Uh, it's fascinating to hear you talk about the, the calculations that you made and the, the, mm. the factors that you, you brought in but the, in, in politics there is an emotional level that a lot of supporters have and they value sort of uh, loyalty and of course you're, you're talking about some former Lib Dem colleagues who are fighting these seats and you might well be right that they don't really have a chance. I know you're supporting 15 Lib Dems, yeah. but in 30 seats there'll be Lib well, Dems who might feel a little bit bruised well, by uh, Of this. course, but you know, we and we and the Lib Dems, and I say that because I was in the Labour Party for many years before I uh, left to help found the SDP with Roy Jenkins and so on, but um, in the Lib Dems for many years we use the squeeze tactics just the same way on Labour. For example, I was in Southport, Southport last night uh, and clearly there's a very serious squeeze campaign going on on the, the Labour candidate there to make sure they don't threaten the Lib Dem majority. So Liberal Democrats everywhere use, squeeze targets to count, uh, use the squeeze on their opposition. So I think in this situation where clearly the Liberal Democrats are polling very badly nationally, uh, you know, it really is important just for all progressive-minded voters to get behind the best-placed candidate to beat the Tories in UKIP. 
here in Rossendale and Darwin it's Will Straw. Uh, in Southport last night it was uh, um, John Pugh and in Watford for example where I'm helping very actively it's Dorothy Thornhill the Liberal Democrat who has the best chance of beating the Tories so you have to work the system so you know Liberal Democrats are very used at doing the two horse race argument don't, don't waste your vote on the third you know it works in both directions and, and what do you say to those who suggest that one of the problems with the way that politics works in the UK right now is that rich people with money can influence the outcome of elections. That's kind of what you're trying I totally, to do. I totally agree with that. I think it's appalling. Uh, I have campaigned for all my life against, uh, uh, against big money and politics. I worked very, very hard to make sure, for example, that Lord Ashcroft had to come on shore and uh, not use all his money to, to, to influence elections uh, in the past without paying tax. Uh, I find it very painful to be giving money, but uh, the Tories uh, have such floods of millions because we were not able in government to clamp down on party donations. Um, and I just felt I'd, all I could do was do a little bit to try and level up the playing field. But you are pounding the pavements as well. So. Of course I am. No, no, no. I mean, I, I didn't, uh, unlike Tony Blair, for example, I didn't just send out lots of checks. I, I carefully went through checking the seats and then I rang up every candidate I was thinking of supporting personally, had a good chat with them, didn't actually tell them at the beginning why I was really, obviously the Liberal Democrats knew me anyway, but with the Labour candidates I rang up to talk to them, ask about things, you know, ask how it was all going and then at the end said, and would you like a donation from me? And they were all delighted, I can tell you, no one was sending my cheques back. No, no, and, and, but what do you say to your, finally, what do you say to those former Lib Dem colleagues who see this picture of you with your vote Labour rosette on, I might be thinking of chucking something at the telly, don't I? Well, it, well they shouldn't. I mean, uh, last night I had my vote Liberal Democrat badge on and my yellow tie on, and I am genuinely trying to have a progressive alliance all around the country. In 1997, in 2001, in 2005, we were effectively doing the same thing. I mean, I remember going round Twickenham in 1997 for Vince Cable, who was then challenging for it, handing out copies of the Daily Mirror saying, vote Labour in most places, vote Liberal Democrat here. Uh, and we're just trying to create the spirit of those days, which under Charles Kennedy, cooperation on the left worked very well.